This is um, Derbyshire Street in Bethnal Green, East London. Uh, this picture was taken in summer 2012. And I, as an independent landscape architect, got talking to the community centre next door in the red building um, about what we could better use this space for other than car parking for 12 car cars. It, you see there's no doors on the building, so it's a really dead end. It is a dead end. There's railings across the end, and it had absolutely no use apart from car parking. Picture of it looking the other way, as you can see, pretty low grade quality pavement. Um, and even the parking wasn't very successful because you, it was very narrow and you couldn't turn around at the end. Um, no residents here, so at night, not many people park here. Some people were parking during the day for um, going to local shops. So we came up with a proposal um, and we formed an informal partnership with the local authority and the community centre, and it was based around the use of suds and capturing the rainwater off the surface of the road and also from part of the roof of the building. And th these blue arrows just indicate the direction of flow and we're, we're aiming to treat all of the water in the location rather than draining it into the gullies and uh, th th that well-known pressure on London's uh, sewer system. So this is a little 3D sketch I did of the scheme at early stages. Down the centre of the, um, the road we've got this uh, feature which we call a rain garden and then there's space for cafe tables and chairs which will be in use in future when the uh, community centre changes the position of its cafe and moves it to the front of the building as a result of this. So this is the, the work in progress. Uh, it's quite a simple idea really is that you pull a trench down the centre of the road and then take the, the falling level of the pavements and continue them into the centre of the street so that the water then runs off, instead of going into the gullies, it runs off into the centre, into the rain garden. And that's the, the beginnings of the rain garden down the middle there. We also have got these um, attenuating planters. So these are tanks that capture the rainwater off of the roof of the building and just slow down the process of the water so it's, it's relieving a bit of the pressure on the sewer system. And I've got 20 seconds to look at a picture of a puddle. It's, um, but this is exciting because this is it in action, this is it working. So this is the new surface and all we've done to let the water drain into the rain garden is left these slots in the new curbs. Um, obviously this is before it was planted but I, I think of it as where there's water there's life uh, because an, even after a little bit of uh, rain and, and a little bit of time you've got the beginnings of some weeds coming through here. And that's just a shot of it uh, as it was after the hard works was finished and some benches have been installed and the planters are there ready for putting the plants in the top and also the, the rain garden. And this, this picture shows how the, the surfaces fall. You can just about see the way the levels work so that the rain slowly moves towards the rain garden. And then we, the great thing about this has been community involvement because of the community centre. So uh, this was a volunteer planting day uh, where I put together a planting plan. The council got ordered the plants and got them delivered to site and then the community come out and uh, we, ha we have a variety of people actually planting on the day. And so this is it, if you remember that picture of it, summer 2012, this is it uh, last summer after it's uh, completed and some of the, the plants have started to grow up. And in the background we've also got um, a green roof bike shelter, so there's a number, number, all the features have been thought about in terms of the way the rainwater falls on the surfaces, so we've got green roofs on the bike shelters uh, the bike racks and also uh, some bin stores. And uh, this graphic was done, this is a signboard in the site, so it just to try and indicate in fairly simple terms how the, uh, the system works and how all of the rainwater uh, navigates around the system and the, the red arrow indicating how before, how the alternative was, how it used to go into the gully and then it eventually finds its way into the uh, sewer system. Just a picture of it looking the other way up. The other, the other end of Derbyshire Street is uh, still traffic, so you can just see it in relation to that. So you can see the green roof on top of the uh, bike racks shelter there. It's only just been planted, so I, I'm hoping that this year that will really take off, but it was, it's a bit barren at that stage. Uh, as, as per the logo here, this is by Green Roof Shelters, who uh, John Little, who's speaking elsewhere here today, he designed these and uh, put the green roof on top and also included these insect uh, holes in, drilled into wood to add to the biodiversity. 
and in September last year we had a great uh, opening street party, um, uh, um, probably about, I don't know, two or three hundred through the space of the whole of the day, people coming and visiting, people passing by, didn't know it was there, local community coming out, and it sent a shiver up my spine because to see it how it was with 12 cars, with nobody in the street, moved to this scenario where you've got a lot of people using the space, how it was intended. And a great band that sort of went Pied Piper off to the uh, local high street and drew people back with their music. But there was a, a, a fact behind this uh, scheme, which I just wanted to share with you today, which is that what the rainwater storage capacity of the system, we calculated it to be 12 cubic meters of water storage. Um, so, as I say, there's nothing significant on its own. And I should say also that it has been recalculated and double that figure has been calculated, but that was based on more detailed drawings. When I did the calculation, I didn't have those detailed drawings. So it's the lower figure I'm going with here. So then I thought, well, what if you apply that to the whole of built London? And if you go to the GIGL website, there's a database there that tells you about green infrastructure information on London. And the whole of London is 1,580 square kilometers. 53% of it is built on, that's roads and buildings. And if you apply that 12 cubic volume across the whole of London, you get to a whopping 10 million cubic meters of, or 10.6 cubic million cubic meters of water storage. So then I thought, well, there's this Tideway, Thames Tideway tunnel being built here in London. Uh, what's the capacity of that? So I just looked at their website and discovered that it was um, 1.6 million cubic meters of water in the proposed tunnel. So actually, what we've got here, if you apply that across all of London, you'd have 10 times that capacity. And the, the cost of the Thames tunnel, not that I'm necessarily against it, because I don't know enough detail about it to say that, but it's probably needed anyway. But for 4 billion, you could have 400,000 Derbyshire Street pocket parks and get all of that value out of it. And that's my final slide. I'll just leave you with that shot. Uh, this was a picture of the planting in September. Thank you very much.